Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of CELTA Insider. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Assignment 2. And Assignment 2 in the CELTA is the most important assignment out of the four assignments given to you on the CELTA course. And the reason why this assignment is so important is because it focuses on language analysis. And as many CELTA tutors put it, how come you're a language teacher? and you don't know how to analyze language. And in this episode, I'm going to answer a whole assignment, and I'm going to act like a candidate on a CELTA course so that you can follow these steps when you're answering your own assignment. Okay, so let's see. So as you see, my friends, um, this is assignment to language related tasks, and it says at the very beginning length, um, 700 to 1000 words. Okay, fantastic. Now, what is the aim of this assignment as it is written here? To develop your ability to look at language, grammar, functional language and vocabulary from the student's point of view to enable you to prepare thoroughly for language lessons. You should make use of grammar reference books or course books and a monolingual dictionary. Bullet points may be used in this assignment. Okay, fantastic. So we know now that we can use any format we want. Right. And it says here, task. Look at the target language sentences in the box below. Let's go and see. And here we are, target language sentences. So we notice that sentence one and two are about grammar. Sentence three and four are about vocabulary. Sentence one is for the elementary level. The second one is for the intermediate level. The third one elementary again, and then the fourth one intermediate. Lovely. Let's go back there and continue reading. Um, analyze meaning. Give a clear definition, appropriate for level, of what the item means. Focus only on the meaning used in the statement. So let's read that one more time. So we need a clear definition. And this definition has to be appropriate for the level. And we've got two levels, elementary and intermediate in this assignment. And focus only on the meaning used in the statement. Like, don't try to provide a meaning, okay, that might be related to another context. No, try to stick to the sentences provided for you in this assignment. Highlight key pronunciation features. Use phonemic script to describe the whole phrase. Word or sentence stress, weak forms, intonation, link between sounds, contractions, lost sounds. So, in other words, connected speech. Analyze for and label the parts using terminology. Um, Structure, statement, negative question forms, if applicable, which means that in the structure, don't only write, okay, the positive form or the affirmative form. No, provide the negative and the question form as well, if applicable. Make sure it's clear which words can be substituted and which are set in stone. Like think about the patterns and then Vocabulary, label the item, adjective, phrasal verb, etc. What is it exactly? Irregular past forms, common collocations, etc. Functional language, show which parts are set in stone again and which parts can be changed. So would your mind cannot be changed? But the verb ing can come in different meanings. Like I can say running, traveling, watching, cleaning, whatever, you name it, right? Good. Now, anticipate problems. Think about what problems the students might have with the features you listed above. Now, what aspects of the meaning might be difficult for students to grasp? Are there other words or structure that express something similar? Okay, right. Does the structure exist in the student's L1? What problems my students have with uh, particular sounds, word stress, 
or rather pronunciation issues. Use your common sense as well as reference resources. What form related mistakes might students make when trying to use the item? Imagine your students are not familiar with each language item. Describe a context that would help convey its meaning so that you could elicit the target sentence as stated here. And when I say as stated here, like in the example given to you. State how you would check students' understanding of the language items, CCQs, concept checking questions, or maybe other tools. Write the concept questions you would ask and provide the answers. If a timeline is appropriate, you should also include this. You can include other ways of checking too, if you wish. State which reference books or other sources you use to obtain the above information. So, let's go and answer this assignment. First one, hmm, you shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits, that's elementary. And it says grammar, which means that I'm not going to analyze pizzas, I'm not going to analyze biscuits. I'm going to analyze shouldn't eat, right? So, shouldn't eat. First, we need a what, a context, conveying the meaning. Now, in order to come up with a good context, I need to look at the sentence carefully. Well, the sentence is about someone giving advice to another person. You shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. Okay, so, remember, we're talking about elementary students. What does that mean? It means be careful when you're coming up with your context. You want something that is easy. I think the best way to handle this one is to have a picture for a context. And I, I'm, I can say something along with a picture that would make meaning very clear for my students. So let's try to find a picture. So this is about what? Someone eating pizzas and biscuits. Why not? Let's go. And I found a good one here. Oh, look at this. That's a lovely picture. And as you see, in this picture, someone is eating a lot of pizzas. So this is what I'm going to, to do with my students. What is he doing? He's eating pizzas. He's my friend. And he always eats pizzas and biscuits. And I always advise him saying you and then I will start eliciting. So showing this picture to my students, what is he doing? He's eating pizzas. I'll get the answers from them. He's my friend and he always eats pizzas and biscuits. And I always advise him saying, then I will elicit from, from my students, you shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. And if, no student was able to come up with this. I'll say it myself. You shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. So this is now my context. Now we come to another important part, the meaning. And there is a common mistake here that I saw a lot of SILTA candidates um, doing this. 
when I talk about the meaning, they start go to should and they visit the dictionary to get its meaning and then they go for eat and they get the meaning of eat and they go for pizza and they get the meaning of pizza and they go for biscuits and they get the meaning of biscuits. No, that's not right. Because here you're not talking about vocabulary, you're talking about grammar. Look at this, it says grammar, grammar, grammar. So this is not a vocabulary part here, which means that you need the meaning of the structure should not plus infinitive. And where can you get this from? Let's go to Practical English Usage by Michael Swan and let's see what Michael Swan says about this. Let's do that. And I have got here Michael Swan's book, but in the form of an application. I, I love it. So I'm going to write here in the application should. Okay, right. So look at this. I've got here should and uh, ought and must. And what does Michael Swan say here? He said should and ought are very similar and can often replace each other. Okay, fantastic. And he said here, they are both used to talk about obligation and duty, to give advice. That's what we want. So to give advice. Now, let's go back to our assignment. So meaning to give advice to someone. Meaning is to give advice to someone. Now, what about anticipated problems? Okay, let's think about that, anticipated problems. Do we anticipate any problems with meaning here? You shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. And remember, we're talking here about grammar for elementary students. So you can write that here elementary students might be confused between the usage of have to and should. For example, and then what about the solution? So that's the problem. I'll be organized here, solution. Because when you're organized, you make your tutor's life easy, and that would make him make your life easy as well. So solution, elementary students might be confused between the usage of have to and should. Now, what is the solution? We can say, I will use, I will ask CCQs that will clarify the meaning. Fine. Now, so check in understanding, which is actually, I said here that I'll be using CCQs. So let's think about CCQs for you shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. Now, question is, is that an order? No. Is it a piece of advice? Yes. Do I care about this person? Yes. Okay. And of course, the least important question is the last one. Because with the first and the second, the meaning is clear. Now let's go to the pronunciation. How can I um, answer the part related to pronunciation for shouldn't eat? Now, when it comes to grammar, my advice will be transcribe everything. Some tutors will say only transcribe the underlying part, 
But I would say transcribe everything just in case, because some other tutors would love to see the transcription of the whole thing, especially in grammar, because of connected speech, right? So let's think about you shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. And I have got here a wonderful program, actually. So I'm going to copy this and throw it into this program. And this program, my friends, is called, and this program, my friends, is called Phonetizer. It's all about fanatics. Like, as you see, I'm going to paste this here, and then I will say transcribe, and I've got the whole transcription right in front of me now. But wait a minute, I'll tell you what to do. Let's, I'm copying this, and I'm going to take it and put it here. But I need to be careful. Now, look at this. Why you need to be careful? Phonetizer would help you so much giving you the transcription of each word, but it will not help you when it comes to connected speech. So you need to know connected speech on your own. So look at this. So I've got here you, obviously that is wrong because that's the strong form. And we don't use the strong form, you know, um, um, when we're speaking uh, quickly, when we're using connected speech, we don't say you, we say you, sh you shouldn't, you, you, you. So we need a schwa in here. So let me copy it from that part. Right, I need a schwa in here, so I'm gonna paste it. So this is you shouldn't. Okay, good. You shouldn't eat so many pizzas and, not and, so we need also a weak form here. So you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't eat so many pizzas and biscuits. And it doesn't matter whether your transcription is American English or British English. Obviously, this is American English, this part. If I want it to be British English, I'll change this one into a schwa, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now, uh, pronunciation. What are the problems here in say you shouldn't? Okay, the problem, um, what, what problems do you expect your students to make when it comes to you shouldn't? So I will say, Students might pronounce shouldn't as as should not without using the contracted form solution I will use backward drilling wonderful good now let's go to form now what is the form here and if you don't know the form again you can go back to Michael's one uh, practical English usage and the form is should plus not plus infinitive. Okay, that's the negative one. So we'd say you shouldn't eat pizzas, like example. Now, but let's talk about the affirmative. Let's be more organized here. So let me just write negative. So this is what is given. And it depends here. Some CELTA tutors would like you some CELTA tutors would like some CELTA tutors would like you to add um, the other forms, like not only the negative part, not only the form given to you not only the form given to you, but you would love to see the other forms as well. So we've got here negative, let's go to the affirmative. And the affirmative is should. Let's put here subject, let's be more specific. Subject plus should, not plus infinitive here. Also, we're going to have subject plus 
should plus infinitive and example you should eat healthy food for example and then question four should plus subject plus infinitive for example should I eat healthy food okay right so that's the form so what problems do we expect with the form right now might say problem students may use a wrong negative form this is not enough I need to clarify what I mean exactly so for example don't shoot then what is the solution I will clarify the form on the board telling them how to negate should um, can we add more yes of course you can add more anticipated problems you can think of more and add them okay good now so this was an example um, of what of this part here we still need the references what references did we use so you can write practical English usage Michael Swan Oxford University Press and if there is a specific page it will be great also to add it right now let's go to the second one and let's analyze it if I knew his number I'd phone him okay and let's remember that we're talking here about intermediate students so we need a context okay I haven't seen my friend John for a long time I haven't seen my friend John for a long time whenever I want to see him I write him an email because I don't have his phone number so if I and then I will elicit so this is what's going to happen exactly I'm going to look at my students and say I haven't seen my friend John for a long time whenever I want to see him I write him an email because I don't have his phone number so if I and then I get them to continue if I knew his number I I'd phone him now someone might say Shady what if they didn't give you what you wanted I'll say it okay I, I will not elicit forever okay I maximum like elicitation like 20 seconds or 30 seconds right good meaning and again it's not the meaning of new it's not the main the meaning of phone it's the meaning of the second conditional and I would say here and if you don't know go to practical English usage and check with Michael Swan the meaning here would be hmm an action that is unlikely to happen so let's just say expressing an action that is unlikely to happen because actually I don't know the number now anticipated problems what would be the anticipated problems here I say problem students might be confused students might be 
confused between the first and second conditional solution I will ask CCQs that will clarify the nature of the second conditional. Now, good. Check and understanding, CCQs. So we need now to create CCQs on, if I knew his number, I'd phone him. Wonderful. How would I, how, how would I do this? Now, first, if I knew his number, it's in the past, but it's not actually the past. I'm talking actually about now or the future. If I knew his number, okay, so the question is, does he know his number? And the answer is no. Is it likely that he will phone him? The answer is, the answer is no. Are we talking about past, present, or future? We're talking about present or future, but we're not talking surely about the past. Now pronunciation, and again, let's uh, use phonetizer. So let's take it, copy it, okay, and throw it to phonetizer, and then we can use features of connected speech later. Right, so let's go to phonetizer, where is it? Yes, my friend, let's clean it from the previous example, here we are. Okay, and transcribe. Okay, good. So we have it now. Copy. And let's paste it here. Okay. Now, if I knew, obviously this is American English. If I knew, but again, it doesn't matter. If I knew his number, I'd phone him. Then I would say, so there is an elision here, so I'm going to remove this. I, well, that is done already. I phone him and there will be another elision here. Wonderful. So if I knew his number, I would phone him. Usually in British English, this would be, uh, if I knew his number, phone him. I would phone him and this one will be a schwa instead. Let's copy. Yeah, that's how. The British English one would look like. So if I knew his number, I'd phone him. Lovely. Now, what do we expect as anticipated problems in pronunciation? And try to make the anticipated problems about the if conditional. Right, so problem. Students may pronounce the strong form of would instead. Solution, I will use whole class drilling, group drilling, and individual drilling. Of course, you can use backward drilling as well, just showing you um, a kind of different answer. Right, good. Now for, how do I put that in? I say, if plus past simple slash would plus infinitive. And of course, according to some grammar books, people would not love um, uh, past simple here. So they would love to say if plus second form of the verb would plus infinitive. Well, it doesn't matter. And then you can show also the negative form, right? And you can add also the question form and all that stuff. 
Um, as long, I mean, as I said in the beginning, it depends on what your tutor wants. Some tutors would love the three forms here, like affirmative, negative, and question. And some other tutors, they, they just want the form given to you in a sentence. Right, now let's go here to um, problems related to form. I would say, hmm. Okay, problem. Students might use well instead of would. What is the answer to this? Solution, I, I will use a substitution table to clarify the form. And references, practical English usage, Michael Swan and all that stuff now. Right, good. Um, analysis. I don't listen to the radio. Now we're coming to vocabulary. So we're done with grammar. It's vocabulary time now. And we've got, I don't listen to the radio. Now we need the context to teach the word radio for the elementary students. And I guess nothing is better here than a picture, especially because also we have the word radio in Arabic. Yes, we say radio, a bit different in pronunciation, but you know, it will be very easy for students. So let's go and bring a picture of a radio. So here we are, that's a good picture. Right, let's make it smaller. Wonderful. And let's put down there what we will say to students. What will the man listen to? Okay. And the answer would be the radio. And that's it. Bob's your uncle. Right. Let's go to meaning. Now, how do I get the meaning when it comes to... Um, Vocabulary, easy, a dictionary. Okay, let's write the word radio and see. Hmm, wonderful. Right, a piece of electronic equipment used for listening to radio broadcasts. Okay, let's copy that. Okay, and let's go. Hmm, meaning. Lovely, I will paste it here. So, a piece of electronic equipment used for listening uh, to radio broadcasts. Wonderful. Right. Will there be a problem with um, meaning? No. Meaning will be clear for my students as they have the same word in Arabic. In the first language, they have it. So, how come there will be a problem with meaning? Okay, check in understanding. Do we need CCQs here? No, for the very same reason, because students are familiar with this word in L1. Pronunciation. Um, how do I add the pronunciation here to the analysis? Easy. Go back to the dictionary. This is Cambridge Dictionary. And copy the British and American pronunciation. No problem. You can come here and then add it. And, and here we are. We're happy now. Right. Problems? Yes. I expect problems with pronunciation. So problem. Students may pronounce the word as they say it in Arabic and then provide the Arabic pronunciation so your tutor uh, knows exactly how the error will look like right and I would say let's copy that part here and then we add the mistake 
They will not say raid you. They will say rad you. So it will look actually like this, my friends. Rad you. Now, nice. Now let's go to the form. What is the form of the word rad you? Noun. So you're going to say noun. And it is countable. Lovely. Do we expect um, any problem with the form? Yes. What is it? Problem. Students might write the plural form as follows. And of course, this is wrong. So, solution. I will write the correct plural form on the board. As for references, I'm going to write here Cambridge Advanced Dictionary. Good. Now let's come to the last item in the assignment, which is arrogant vocabulary for the intermediate level. Right, and we need a context. Sam always thinks he is better than everyone else. He is, and then I'm going to elicit from my students. He is arrogant. Now the meaning of arrogant, let's go to this time long man dictionary, let's check it. Here we are. Let's write um, arrogant and oh yeah, let's copy it. Behaving in an unpleasant or rude way because you think you're more important than other people. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Do we have now um, anticipated problems? Yes, problem. Students might confuse it with the word confident. Solution. In my CCQs, I will stress on the fact that Arrogant is a negative word. Wonderful. Check and understanding. So, we're talking about arrogant. So, let's create our CCQs from the definition. Behaving in an unpleasant or rude way. So, I would say, is Sam rude? The answer is yes. And then it says, behave in an unpleasant way. Does he behave well? No. Does he think he's better than everyone? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Pronunciation. Again, let's go to the dictionary and copy it. Lovely. Do we anticipate problems with this pronunciation? Yes, problem. Arab students may tend to pronounce to pronounce it as follows. And they might pronounce it as arrogant instead of arrogant. Okay, good. Solution. So solution, I will use group drilling, individual drilling, and whole class drilling, whole class 
drilling. Okay, good. Form, what is the form? It's an adjective. Do we expect problems? Yes. Problems. Students may misspell the word arrogant. Solution. I will make sure I write the correct form on the board. And let's fix this one. Okay. Nice. Now, now let's move to some important tips before we finish this episode. A pass assignment shows that a candidate can. So let's talk about the features of a pass assignment. And I'd say number one, analyze language correctly for teaching purposes. Okay. Two, correctly use terminology relating to form, meaning, and phonology when analyzing language. Three, use suitable means for conveying and checking the meaning of target language. Access reference materials and reference information that you've learned about to an appropriate source. And finally, use written language which is clear, accurate, and appropriate to task. Now, references for vocabulary. Um, I recommend these two dictionaries. Dictionary of Contemporary English, Longman, and Cambridge's Advanced Learners Dictionary. As for um, references for grammar, I recommend Practical English Usage by Michael Swan or English Grammar in Use by Raymond Murphy. And for anticipating problems, I recommend Learner um, English. Okay, it's also um, an amazing resource. Uh, by Michael Swan and Bernard Smith, right? And it will help you um, discover the kind of mistakes and errors that um, are traced back to mother language interference. Lovely. Um, some common pitfalls that can lead to a resubmission. So be careful of the following points because you can have a resubmission if you've got one of these. Number one, inappropriate concept checking questions. Okay, so make sure that you refer to the input sessions and we have uh, a couple of amazing videos on how to create CCQs. You will find them in the playlist um, called Frameworks. So you can visit these videos there. Uh, not providing sufficient detail of anticipated problems and possible solutions. So make sure that you write clearly and people can understand what problems you're talking about here. So when you say, students will have a problem pronouncing this word. Yeah, but what problem? What is it exactly? Right. Um, not providing a bibliography, like at the very end of the whole assignment, make sure that you list the books and resources you used. And forgetting to write in the phonemic symbols, stress marks, linking, etc. Like um, if, if, if you just copy on paste, you know, in your assignment without making sure that this is um, um, go side by side with the rules of connected speech, especially in the grammar part, then that's a problem, right? Hmm. Um, also, not referencing grammar books or dictionaries that you use when researching language for this assignment. You can get a resubmission just because of this. Right, good. And include at the end of the assignment, don't forget that, my friends, a bibliography, as I said, and also a final word count. So, um, in this episode, we talked about assignment two, uh, the most important assignment um, in CELTA. I hope you enjoyed um, this episode. And remember, I'll be down there in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye-bye.